What's happening, guys? Welcome to a very special edition of the Start Today podcast. I'm your host, Chris Cavallini. Today, I am solo, and I have a short, but what I feel to be very important message to share with you today. And uh, I'll just start off by pointing out the fact that today, we're going to discuss something that isn't normally in the wheelhouse of uh, topics and talking points uh, here on the Start Today podcast, but it's something that I believe is extremely important and uh, something that uh, awareness has been somewhat drawn to recently due to uh, an event that has occurred within pop culture. And the event that I'm referring to is about two weeks ago. Um, some of you may know that Chadwick Boseman, who was a movie star, um, he played Jackie Robinson in the movie 42, which was the story of the life of Jackie Robinson. He was in a bunch of the Avengers movies. And of course, he was the uh, the star of the Black Panther, which that was a mega blockbuster, uh, as well as a cultural uh, breakthrough for the African-American community. Um, the guy was also a phenomenal human being from what I understand, but he recently passed away due to colon cancer at the age of 43. Um, again, you know, this was, uh, it was all over social media when it happened. And uh, I don't think it was by accident. I think in our society, we tend to really glorify, uh, you know, celebrities and, 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 and athletes and, and things like that. But, but this guy uh, was actually somebody who was out there making a difference in the world. Um, he had been battling with colon cancer for a while. He kept it under wraps. And during his final years, he would still make the time to get out and talk to kids who had cancer and to give back and just do what he could. And I had alluded to the fact that the movie, The Black Panther, you know, not only made, I mean, just insane amounts of money uh, and it was extremely successful by box office standards, but it was also uh, a cultural breakthrough for the African-American community because prior to the Black Panther, there had never really been um, just a, a mega superhero movie where, you know, the, the, the main character was uh, in fact black. And this was a big deal because it was an awesome movie. And it also just, I think in a lot of ways for the African-American community for them to, to see somebody just that looked like him or looked like them just on the big screen. I just think that, uh, I think that it meant a lot to a lot of people. And, uh, it was very unfortunate that we had lost him prematurely 43 years young. I mean, that is, uh, man, that's super young. Um, but he, he passed away due to colon cancer. And that's really what I want to talk to you guys about today is colon cancer. It's something that I recently learned about um, earlier in the year, but this year, 148,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer, okay? About 53,000 will lose their life. This disease will affect men and women uh, equally, and it's, uh, it's something that I know uh, a lot of people don't really fully understand. I know I was one of those people. Earlier in this year, uh, earlier this year, uh, around March, I had some health issues of my own. And uh, in the process of combating the health issues, one of the procedures that uh, that needed to be done to essentially source what could potentially be wrong with me was a colonoscopy. And I actually got two colonoscopies done in, uh, I believe, a two to three week time frame. And basically, when you get a colonoscopy. Um, they, they put you under and they basically go up through your colon, up your, your ass for lack of a better term. Those of you who don't know what colon is, um, with uh, a camera and they look around and they look for anything that shouldn't be there. Um, and that's exactly what they did. And when I got my second colonoscopy, uh, the doctor, when I, when I woke up from anesthesia, he had shared with me the fact that. Uh, although they didn't find what they were hoping they would find as far as uh, something that could potentially help them source the issue of why I was there in the first place, he did come across some 
uh, things called polyps, which he subsequently removed. Um, a polyp is basically, it's how cancer starts in the colon. Okay, polyps are basically like they start off as a growth, right? It's, it's, it's like, a, like a growth smaller than a pea. And over time, they can, uh, they can grow in size. And also, depending on the type of polyp, they can essentially form into cancer. Um, sometimes the polyps change into cancer and grow. And obviously, as the cancer spreads and grows, that's when people get in trouble. And the good part about polyps is when they're caught early on, they can be treated and the risk of cancer can be uh, mitigated greatly or avoided altogether. So in my case, when he told me that he found these polyps and basically then explained to me what a polyp is and why he uh, removed the polyps that he found, this was, uh, this was something that like, I, I really kind of just woke me up a little bit. It, it woke me up because I really wasn't aware of what caused, uh, you know, colon cancer, what could potentially, um, you know, lead to colon cancer. I wasn't aware that, you know, the recommended schedule of which people should be getting colonoscopies. I wasn't there on the recommended schedule. I was there for an isolated incident. And again, I'm 37 years old. Um, but again, it's really important that if one is to catch these signs and these symptoms early, then, you know, like I said, that the, there's a, a dramatically high chance of, uh, any occurrences with uh, the formation of disease to be avoided altogether. And, um, you know, in this situation, it's just, it's important that you catch it before it becomes cancer. And clearly, you know, that's where almost 150,000 Americans uh, every single year, including Chadwick Boseman, unfortunately came up short. So today, I, I just wanted to just draw some awareness to this, guys, because um, I think a lot of people associate like disease and cancers and, and such with individuals who are just older and super unhealthy. And uh, that's just not always the case. Um, according to the CDC, colon cancer is among the 80% of diseases that are clinically categorized as preventable via healthy lifestyle habits. So basically the CDC acknowledges that 80% of disease are preventable should we live and lead a healthy lifestyle. What does that, what does that mean? Well, it means nourishing your body with the right things, eating the right foods, getting lots of exercise, just operating in such a way where you're prioritizing your health. Um, I mean, these are things that we talk about all the time here, uh, for a number of reasons, but this is, uh, this is something that, you know, I, I don't think people really, when they think about eating good and they think about, uh, you know, exercise and, and, and the purpose behind it. I don't really know that people even factor in the, the fact that if you don't eat good and you don't exercise, that you will eventually get sick and not the sick where, you know, you're sick for a week or you're sick for a couple of days, sick as in become diseased. And at that point, you know, you're in for a tough road, but there are some factors that contribute to uh, an increased risk of colon cancer. And I thought that it was worth pointing out today, just for anybody who, you know, this might be something you want to look into, something for you to be aware of. And just look, I just feel that in light of what happened with me earlier in the year, and just with this recent event in society, I just thought that this was the right thing to do. Um, I, I feel I'm a pretty sharp person. I'm very health conscious person. And, uh, you know, there, to me, like, there's more things that I don't know than things that I do because there's so much information out there and I'm constantly looking to, uh, to, to, to learn more, to, to improve on, you know, my, my knowledge, to improve on my health. So, you know, I can not only, uh, experience those benefits for myself, but I can then bestow that knowledge and that wisdom, uh, you know, to other people share with you guys. So, you know, we can all live life, uh, the way it was intended for us to live. So, um, some factors that essentially influence and increase your risk of colon cancer would be if you have uh, a history of cancer in your family, um, colon or otherwise, okay? If your family has a history of cancer, automatically you're at higher risk for colon cancer. If your family has a history of obesity and obesity-related illness uh, as well, that again is something that's gonna increase your likelihood of developing colon cancer. Um, second factor, 
being overweight or obese, shocking, right? Being overweight or obese is the number one factor that increases your risk of colon cancer more so than any other variable. All right, another thing, lack of regular physical activity and exercise, poor nutrition, uh, specifically a diet that includes lots of just processed foods, uh, high in sugar, high in fat, and just you know low in fiber, not enough fruits and vegetables, things of that nature. Um, again, lack of exercise, poor nutrition, both things that ultimately lead to uh, being overweight and being obese. Also, people who smoke and uh, drink too much alcohol. Uh, smoking increases your risk of colon cancer immensely, as does uh, excessive alcohol consumption. So 94% of people who are diagnosed with colon cancer are age 45 and over. Okay, so you hear that and you think, oh, well, okay, that's good. So mostly it's, it's, it's older people. Well, if you break down the numbers, okay, if you, if you break down the numbers and quantify that other 6%, that 6% translates into 9,000 people every year under the age of 45 who get colon cancer. And obviously Chadwick Boseman was one of these people. And obviously, you know, he didn't catch it early on because he probably didn't have this information. Um, just like the other 9,000 people who get colon cancer under the age of 45 didn't have this information and he didn't have the ability to take action and to go on offense and to do the simple things that are required to uh, just to, to, to get an exam and take care of any potential issues that could present themselves uh, early on to uh, avoid getting sick and avoid uh, a, a premature exit off of this earth. So age 45 is an interesting number because that is also the age that the American Cancer Society recommends that, quote, healthy people get screened for colon cancer. And then after that, the recommended protocol would be to get it every 10 years. Now, you go online, you do a Google search on this, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the recommendation for people to get colon cancer. And unfortunately, that's what most people dictate their course of action based on is, uh, is an internet search, is what these, these governing authorities and health organizations are telling us we should do. And as much as I would love to be able to just sit here and tell you that, that we can always trust these recommendations and that these accredited health agencies are there to lead you in the right direction. The fact is I don't like that recommendation. I don't like a lot of the recommendations that I see and that I hear. And in this particular situation, I don't trust that protocol at all. I mean, if that protocol was accurate, we wouldn't be losing as many people as we are every year to colon cancer. There wouldn't be as many instances of people developing colon cancer. There wouldn't be 9,000 people under the age of 45 who essentially were, were getting colon cancer, you know, every single year. So healthy people, what does that even mean these days? We know that we're in, uh, I mean, the outside of the pandemic epidemic, I mean, the biggest and most harmful epidemic that has been occurring within our society, you know, the last couple of decades is the obesity epidemic. So three quarters of our population in the US here, three quarters of uh, adults in this country are either categorized as overweight or obese. So like you do not get that way by leading a healthy lifestyle, which means these recommendations that they're giving, um, you know, most likely aren't going to be in the best interest of, 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 of everybody or at least three quarters of uh, the population as it were. So I suggest that, you know, if look at this point in your life, if you're 35 or over and you've never got a colonoscopy or like perhaps, you know, you're a little younger and maybe you haven't lived a like super healthy life to this point, maybe you don't, you know, your diet isn't on point and, and just overall, like you objectively know that there have been some decisions that you could have made that would have been a little better throughout your journey this far, I highly suggest that you go and you get this procedure done. I recommend you go find somewhere that you can get a colonoscopy done and that you get it done because you're gonna be ahead of the power curve. And man, I, I just, I, I just, even if one person, if one person does this and actually catches something that can be immediately addressed right there on the spot that could have avoid just disastrous potential deadly consequences. Um, 
you know, I'm, I would feel really, really good about that, guys. And another thing that I just thought was interesting and worth pointing out, I'd mentioned to you that I got two colonoscopies over the course of three weeks' time. The initial colonoscopy that I received, I was actually in the ER. And when I got that colonoscopy, they were, again, attempting to figure out what was wrong with me and what was causing me to uh, bleed internally. My hemoglobin was down in the threes, which is insane. We're not going to get into that. But they didn't say anything or do anything about the polyps that were there that were discovered three weeks later. And those polyps didn't pop up over the course of three weeks. The purpose of my colonoscopy wasn't to um, essentially assess the health of my colon in either situation. But one was in the ER where there's just a different standard and level of care. Uh, it's more rushed, it's more high paced. And, you know, quite frankly, this shouldn't have been overlooked the way that it was, but, but it was. So I just urge anybody who may have had to get a colonoscopy for reasons that just have nothing to do with basically just a, a, a proactive check for colon cancer to just keep that in mind. Because when I went to a, a private physician who did the colonoscopy, although he was again, checking for other things, he noticed uh, what he noticed as far as the polyps that had developed and he did something about it. So um, just one of those things where if, if this is maybe not the sole reason to uh, that, that you're there and you happen to have got one in the past, that n doesn't necessarily mean that you're good. And um, just again, if, uh, if, if what I'm saying here resonates with you, if this is something that, you know, like, make sure you even lift an eyebrow. I really encourage you to uh, to go make it happen. And hopefully you have insurance and that, that this procedure would be covered. But if you don't, or you do and still have a portion of which you're responsible to pay for, like it's so important that you, you can't mess around with this kind of stuff, guys. So many times I hear people um, that didn't go to the doctors when they really needed to and had something clearly have something that is wrong with them and is, and has been wrong with them for a while, but because they don't have insurance, they don't go to the doctor. And it is just so fuck. It is just so irresponsible. It is so dangerous and, and it's not fair. It's not fair to the people who care about you. It's not, it's not fair to your family. It's not fair to your loved ones, your friends, your coworkers, anybody who might rely on you. Your health is so important. If you have something wrong with you or you know, there's something that you need to do to ensure that your health is maintained. You absolutely have a responsibility to do just that because you look at the financial commitment that might be present in that situation, right? Your financial obligation, regardless of how much it is. The question to ask yourself is certainly not what it's going to cost you to do it. It's, it's, it really needs to be looked and viewed upon as what it's going to cost if you don't. What are the potential consequences to you, to your family, to the individuals that care about you, to your quality of life? Not to mention if things do end up going in a way that is not super favorable, it's going to cost a lot more at that point to treat and sort out an issue once it's full blown, uh, you know, once it's full blown cancer or past the point of no return. So these are just things that we need to uh, just maybe reprogram our thinking uh, with in a certain way and just realize that like our health, our life, it is our responsibility in this, in this dynamic, in this situation. When I say it's, it's, it's our responsibility. I'm, I'm saying that we can't just look online and look at like what the American cancer society is recommending or what the center of disease control, the CDC, what they're suggesting. These are things that we need to do. We need to stay on offense and we need to do what is in our own best interest. And we need to look at situations like this. This, the, the, this man who obviously was a phenomenal human being that was taken from us prematurely, we need to look at this as an opportunity to honor him and honor everything that he stood for by taking some level of action that will essentially lower the risk of us going down the same path that ultimately he had to. Because I think that, you know, more than anything, if there's something, if there is some good to be taken out of a situation like this, this could be it. And uh, I hope that this message was well received, guys. I know it's uh, not like normal. It's not a normal thing that we discuss. 
Um, but there's just so many things that, uh, you know, I've learned and, and um, just have this knowledge of, and I need to do a much better job of, uh, of sharing it with you and, 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 and educating you and, and teaching you guys as I continue to learn to where we uh, we're all armed with the best knowledge that we can to live our lives in the, in, in the safest, healthiest manner. And um, yeah, just take care of ourselves and continue to uh, look after our loved ones. But guys, that's all I have for you today. And uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you listening. And um, yeah, I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Thank you.